Welcome to Office 2010 video 27. Hey, we're studying Excel, and as always, if you want to download the workbook, click on the link directly below the video. Hey, we need to talk about stylistic formatting. That is, we've already done uh, some stylistic formatting in the first two videos, but we want to put it all together here. We have a little report here, so we need to do some stylistic formatting, and that's things like fill color, font color, uh, bold borders. So stylistic formatting, and then we'll do some page setup, because we want to make this report look good. All right, so we have three products, uh, January through March. Here's our unit sold. We already have some formulas here, so there's some totals, and there's a header across the top. First things first, let's go ahead and center this across the top. I'm going to, with my selection cursor, click in A and go all the way to E. And I am not going to use Merge and Center. We talked about this a few times already. There are problems with this. Uh, we saw some examples earlier. So I'm going to use the alternative, Center Across Selection. Now, with that highlight, and I need to open up Format Cells dialog box, Control-1 is the keyboard shortcut for format cells. Um, any of these dialog launchers will also open up the format cells dialog box. All right, I'm going to go to alignment, horizontal, center. I'm going to do nothing else, no merging. So that's looking good. I'm now going to go over and to fill. Now fill is just like this, more options. You actually have some uh, fill effects down here, but we're just going to do, I'm going to do black. Now, the rule of thumb for fill and font is if fill is dark, font has to be light. And we're talking value. So black is obviously uh, a dark value color. But if you uh, use red, which I think I will use red just to illustrate this point here. If you use red, most of us think of this as a light color, but it's not. Value-wise, it's very dark. If you print this out with fill and font black, which is the automatic here, you can't read it. And the way you tell is, well, let's just go ahead and click OK here. The way you could tell is if you squint your eyes and you can, you can hardly tell the difference between the fill and the font color, you know the value is too close. I'm going to control one. So if I have that, I want font some light color like white. I'm going to go to border. So uh, we've done a little bit of number. This is the format cells. We've done lots of number. I want to do a bunch more in the class. Alignment, we've done a little bit here. You could also do things like this to adjust the, the actual text. Font. Border, which we'll uh, talk about in just a moment. Fill. Protection is for protecting uh, sheets and unprotecting. We're not going to get to that in this class. Um, so there's a bunch of tabs here. And really, all of the different types of formatting, cell, cell formatting, are in this dialog box, whereas not all of them are up in the ribbons. All right. Let's go to Font. We got that. Let's go to Border. Now, I just want to outline. And we'll actually do a slightly different example in just a moment. But the way it works is you pick your line. By default, I have this. You pick your color. Automatic black is fine. And then you draw your line. Now, you can draw it with these buttons here, or you can use your, your uh, built-in ones here. None, that's to remove when you want to remove borders. Outline, that just goes just around the outside. It's not going to do any of the in. Uh, the lines inside the uh, highlighted area. And then inside, that would do all the inside ones, vertical and horizontal. I just want outline. Click OK. All right, uh, now next thing we need to, I'm going to add some formatting to the labels. And I'm going to hold Control and highlight those. So knowing that Control selection trick, which we've used throughout this class, very handy here also. I'm just going to use the bucket here. I'm going to use some dark blue. And then I'm going to use some font, some white. Ooh, that looks terrible. But we saw that red just as an illustration um, for value. I'm going to go back up here, and I'm going to select black. All right. Next thing I'd like to do is highlight and add some borders. I'm going to use this button here, all. 
All right, next thing, we have to add some um, formatting here, some number formatting. Now, these are units. And so we would like to add not a dollar sign, not accounting a currency, but uh, a different type of formatting, at least so we could put commas. We don't need any decimals because these are units. So I'm going to control, with all this range highlighted, control 1. Go to number, and we're going to use, oh, number. Number's great. You can choose to use a separator or, and show decimal. So I'm going to say 0 and um, a separator. You can also choose negative numbers, the, the formatting for them. But I like number for units, pretty nice, 0, that. Let's click OK. Now, the this particular report is just adding up columns of units. So for product 2, our total was 4,258. But for various reports, whether they're an, whether it's an income statement from accounting or a unit summarization port, report like this, there's always a bottom line. And the bottom line is the number the, that we're trying to calculate in this report. Now for us, the bottom line is, hey, just the total. There's a special kind of formatting that you can put on the total, whether it's an income statement or a sales summary report like this. Let's go ahead and highlight this whole uh, range of cells here and control one. We want to talk about in more detail about borders. Now the order in which you apply borders goes from left to right. Now, in earlier versions, this was over on this side, and you always had to do read backwards, in essence, because you always have to do line, color, and then draw your lines in that order. So it's nice that they changed the orientation, and now they have this on the left. Select your line. Well, for us, when we're doing the bottom line number, you have a thick, dark line at the top and a double line at the bottom. So the way you do it, and you can pick this one or this one, depending on uh, the thickness of your line. I'm going to pick that one, and I'm simply going to come over here and draw by clicking. Now, I'm going to undo that. You could also, if you select it, come over and select this one. And it does it like that. I pretty much like to draw myself, so I always click. Oh, look at that. It went away. So you can remove them also. I'm going to come over here and get this one. Get this one. See how I'm having to go back and forth, back and forth when you change the line. Now I'm going to come over here. Now if you had to change the color, you'd change it right here. Select the line, select the color, and then come over once it's selected and click. All right. So the order is very important of how you do borders. Click OK. That doesn't look like it worked. Oh, I got to click over here. So now I have uh, my bottom line borders, a thick border at the top. And technically what this means, that line means I did some, here's the result, but I did some calculation on the numbers above to get to this. That's what that line means. And this one means chuk, chuk, that's the bottom line. Stop. That's the number right there we were trying to calculate. All right, now that was some stylistic formatting. We'd like to do page setup. We're trying to create this report. Now we did this in our first or second video we did some page setup. So what do we always got to do first? We have to look at page setup. And in 2010, they combined print preview and print dialog box. So we're just going to use the keyboard shortcut Control P. Oh, look at this. We can see that there is, oh, well, that's not supposed to be there. That page setup uh, I left that there from before. Okay, so don't watch this. I'm going undo, <laughs> to undo everything real quick. Just imagine you're not seeing this. You're going off to get a sip of coffee or something. Okay. All right, uh, Control-P. Oh, my, my page setup. Oh, I still <laughs> left that there. Uh, Control P. Ah, look, that page setup is terrible. But notice, there's a couple problems here. We want to make it bigger. We want to orientate it horizontal. And the rule I use is since it's longer than it is um, tall, and I have just this one thing I'm printing out. I like to print it out horizontal. 
it's no problem. You can print it out on a vertical piece of paper like this to portrait. But all I'm going to do it horizontal, center it, add some headers and footers, and we get got to get rid of that. All right, now we've looked at this a couple times. This is the print slash print preview. Here's the print preview. Here's the print dialog box. Don't click this to close it. You got to either click that exit or escape. All right, where is page setup? Page layout. Lots of stuff here. I like to use the dialog launcher here or the keyboard shortcut. Alt PSP. All right, now let's do it landscape and let's scale it. I want to scale it up like 150%. 150%. Now I'm going to go over to margins. Here's the preview. Pretty much always I like to just do horizontal. Now, in some cases, you really want some specific, just like we studied over in Word left, top, right, bottom. Oh, and here's where the uh, adjustments for footer and header are, right? Half an inch from the edge of the page, one inch from the edge of the page. I'm going to just, most of the time I s select the defaults, they're usually great. If I'm really trying to cram something in, maybe, you know, I move this up a little bit and that up a little bit, but usually horizontal just works. If you do vertical for a report like this with a single table, it looks kind of funny sitting in the middle of the page uh, vertically because we don't read that way. We read from top to bottom. So horizontal, header and footer. Um, here's the preview. Here's the built-in one. Here's the custom header, custom footer, built-in ones preview. I'm just going to use the built-in ones. We saw this a couple times before. I'm going to use page one of one page one of question mark. Now for our example, this is going to be just page one of one. Even in the case of where there's one, if you're handing out at a meeting, right, and someone drops their papers, they can see, oh, one of one, I got the only one for this, right? So I like that, and that's going to be putting it in the center. All right, now, we selected uh, built-in. It shows a preview. We don't need to use this one. Now, let's do this. And when we click on custom header, it opens up a new dialog box. Left section. I'm going to do the date. And by the way, this is very nice. In 2010, they have little screen tips so you can figure out what each one of these mean. In 2003 and before, they didn't have that. All right, so date. I'm going to come to the center. And I want the actual file name and the sheet tab name. Now, in, in our case, these aren't pretty meaningful. In our first projects, 18 and 19, we saw more meaningful uh, use of the file name and the sheet tab name. But I'm still going to do it here. There is the file name. I'm going to type a space, a dash, a space. So I'm, I put in some code, and then I typed. And now I'm going to click Sheet. So now the file and sheet name will be used. Again, you can imagine if this says, uh, you know, yearly budget, and it was uh, January for the sheet, that would be perfect. All right, and then just to show you, you can always type your name. Your name. Okay, I'm going to click OK on the header. So there we have it. There's our preview. And then I'm going to click OK. Um, actually not going to do that right now because we forgot one thing. Look at that. That is a screen problem. That's not actually the way it looks. But what I'd like to do is set the print area. Now, a uh, couple video 18 or 19, we set the print area up here. Well, you can set it here also. This is the sheet tab. So I'm going to highlight. What that does is it says I'm only printing out that range. It will avoid the note we have below. I'm going to click OK. You can see that note is not going to be included. All right, Control P. And there we have it. We have our stylistic formatting and page setup over here on print. Uh, great little selections. Print active sheet. Ah, oh, there's the print entire workbook. Oh, and selection. Sometimes you have a huge report, right? And you only want to see that. So you select it, Control P, and come over here to bloop, print selection. Pages, that's the custom print. Oh, that's, oh, I have a certain type of printer that allows that here. Most don't. Uh, orientation, custom margins, these are some page setup. We saw in our first couple of videos how we, we actually, in the middle of print preview, page 
print dialog box, we did some page setup. But there it is. I'm going to click Escape because I'm not going to print right here. Uh, our next couple videos will be about the mo one of the most important concepts in Excel, number formatting. Now you can practice right here, homework five. There's just a uh, little table similar to what we just did. Just practice your stylistic formatting and page setup. All right, we'll see you next video.